Hi students, I wanted to do this video so that you could have a little collection of the fundamentals that we've been going over um, in the notational part of our class. Um, you really need to be strong on all these fundamentals uh, so that you can write them and read them without any trouble. So I'm going to go over all the things that we've covered this semester. Um, the first one is the treble clef. Uh, the treble clef sign needs to look something like this. Notice that the top curlicue goes over the G space at the top of the staff. Do not make your treble clef signs too small. They need to be drawn in proportion to everything else. The bass clef should look something like this. Notice that there are two dots added one on the E space and one on the G space. If you put them anywhere else, it's not correct. Measure lines are drawn straight up and down. If you're drawing a grand staff, you connect the two staves with your measure lines. Repeat signs are drawn something like this. It's better to draw the little wings at the beginning and the end of your repeats so that the player has no trouble knowing that those are, in fact, repeat signs. A note head is really a tilted elliptical shape. It's not a circle, and it's not a blob that has no shape. It must be centered on either a space or a line. It must not go outside the designated space or fail to fill out its designated space. Stems are drawn straight up and down and attach to the right side of the note head if the stem points upward. It attaches to the left side of the note head if pointing downward. We use beams to group several eighths or sixteenths notes together, but we don't usually beam from one beat to the next beat. That tends to disguise the next downbeat. Beams are drawn thicker than note stems. Rests are drawn to specify a precise amount of silence. Example, an eighth rest is equal to an eighth note in value. A quarter rest is equal to a quarter note in time value. Half rests and whole rests have specific places where they're drawn. The half rest sits on top of the third line. The whole rest hangs down from the fourth line from the bottom. A whole rest is always worth four whole beats. A half rest is always worth two. Time signatures are not fractions. Fractions are not time signatures. There is no fraction bar in a time signature. The only reason why a fraction bar ever appears is because we don't have any other way to draw that when we're on a computer keyboard. So we use a fraction bar when we're typing. However, when we're writing music on manuscript paper, we never, ever, ever use fraction bars. We just put one number over another number, and that is a time signature. Key signatures have a specific number of sharps and flats, never both. Those sharps and flats are drawn in a particular order and go in a specific place. If you use a key signature, don't draw in the individual sharps and flats. That's what the key signature is there for. If there's a deviation from the key signature, that's called an accidental. Here's a key signature. Spelling triads. Remember, when spelling a triad, the notes are always in order, a third apart. So if you have an augmented chord, you must raise the fifth of the triad, not flat the sixth. If you're spelling a diminished triad, you have then flat the third and the fifth. Here is a triad. Voice leading is a system of resolving certain notes in the most natural sounding way. Resolving means where that note seems to want to go. The reason certain notes seem to naturally resolve to other notes is because of the harmonic underpinning or chord changes. Example, 
if we take a typical cadence, 5-1 in the key of C, which would be a G triad to a C triad, and if the third of the G chord, which is B, is in the melody, guaranteed it will want to resolve upward to C. The B will want to go to a C. Even if it's not in the melody, the B will still want to resolve upward to the C. This is voice leading. If we look at things melodically, B is the seventh degree of the C major scale. So we can say generally that the major seventh always wants to resolve upward to the tonic. In four-part writing, we must double one of the notes in our triad. Usually it's the root or the fifth, almost never the third, which doesn't sound as good. We also stay away from any parallelism in the fifths or the octaves. When you combine this with voice leading tendencies, an entire system starts to unfold, and that is four-part writing. What's the purpose? The individual parts wind up being more melodic with fewer non-musical skips. This system allows us to write four independent melodies that not only make sense linearly, but also vertically in terms of the chord changes. There are just a few rules in the beginning, a bit like parallelism, but the more complex our music becomes, the more rules are needed to point us to the best possible solutions. Like music itself, we need to own those basic rules so that later on, when things get more complicated, we don't have such a hard time. Students, there's one thing that I thought of talking about because so many of you have turned in assignments where things were not drawn exactly right. I think having the right tools is half the job. You really need a soft lead pencil to do all your assignments in. And that's not just for this class, that's for all music classes where you actually have to write music. Um, you also need to have a big fat eraser that's capable of erasing all your mistakes. You never do anything in pen. Uh, you never scratch anything out. And if anything is left ambiguous looking, then it's wrong, it's just wrong. Uh, the whole idea of writing music is to make it look easy and to make it look obvious. So what I have found is that um, a mechanical pencil that has number nine lead, not number seven, but number nine, tends to be fat enough and soft enough that it's really good for making note heads and thick lines. Um, so I would highly recommend that if you haven't gotten yourself one of those by now, if you plan on taking any more music courses, you really should have one of those and you should really have a bunch of those um, magic rub erasers. They're great, uh, they can erase a lot and this is the way we do music. Uh, we don't do it in pen and we don't scratch things out. Thank you everybody for watching this video. I want to make certain that everyone watches it and everyone understands everything in it. If there are any questions about any of these things, don't hesitate to ask me uh, and I'll be happy to explain. But everybody needs to watch the video and everyone needs to sign off on this video on the post in this module. Thank you very much.